something that's not real, but why don't you open your mind to the highest law, the only law that there is, the law of love, and then live from that, and oh, you have no problem with the world uh, from that state of mind. It's just a very natural, easy state of mind. But we do go into things very carefully because when people talk about disease or sickness or uh, different psychological states that they're going through, that's the presenting problem. You know, we have to, the spirit will reach to meet that need or whatever that uh, perception is, the spirit will reach to, to lift the mind up, up into a state of, of divine order or, or a state where everything is in perfect order. It already is, but it's just like when the awareness isn't there, then it seems like there's a lifting, a lifting up or an inspiring that occurs. And, oh, what a great use of time. I mean, I'm having a ball with it. I have fun, it's light, we're very playful. We don't take the, anything seriously. I used to watch comedy movies, but now I can watch the headlines of the newspaper or um, Yahoo or whatever, and I sometimes laugh just just looking at a headline because it just strikes me funny. But it's not it's not kind of a laughing at anything or anyone, but it's just the gentle light laughter of thank God uh, for what's real and uh, thank God this isn't. And right before I came here, we saw two end-of-the-world movies. One was with Nicolas Cage called Knowing, and then another one when I got on the plane to come from, up from Fiji was, uh, I didn't even see the titles at the beginning, but it had Keanu Reeves, and, and it, was, uh, it was an end-of-the-world kind of movie, and I thought, oh boy, <laughs> nice symbols. But it was, there was a lightness to each movie because there was a strong sense of the presence of spirit that was beyond the images that came through in both movies. So, uh, yeah, even, even watching an end of the world movie is, takes on a new likeness and you have a sense that all things are working together for good and, and that there's a great spirit that's beyond the images of this world. I just have a rejoicing in my heart for everything. Sure, sure. Lesson 133 from the, from the workbook about that. I will not value the valueless 
And in that, that workbook lesson, Jesus makes a very helpful statement. He says, uh, every decision you make brings you everything or nothing. Every decision you make brings you everything or nothing. And in the world, it just doesn't make sense, you know, because it's, it's a world where there's constant choices and you're going through every day and some of the very practical decisions, including, you know, whether to wash or take a shower or things like this. It seems to be complicated by this idea that you have a housemate that has different wishes. But, but what he's saying in that lesson and, and what he shares in the rest of the course is he's saying that that in this world, which is a dream world, you're in a state of mind where you're constantly choosing between illusions. You're choosing between appearances and scenarios. And he says, really, this is no choice at all. It's almost like choice has been arrested and, and sent to prison. And then now you've got to use your choice in the prison, you know, within the prison walls, which is what we would call maya or illusion. So choosing between illusions can seem very difficult and confusing and disorienting and so on and so forth. It's really no different like when you, you go into a restaurant and the restaurant has a, a big menu with many, many choices. Let's say you like a lot of different foods. You may find yourself there struggling a bit to come up with a choice because it's like you're choosing between uh, illusions, Jesus would say, and that's really not a choice at all. So, as a stepping stone idea, Jesus says, well, the way that you're going to escape from this is that really there's two purposes in your mind. One, call it the Holy Spirit or the Spirit, and the other is ego, which is the death wish, which is that which, you know, is not real and true, but, but wants you to continue to believe in it, to believe in a lie. And so basically all of the discernment of A Course in Miracles is learning to discern between these two choices. He calls it the right mind and the wrong mind. And even though that itself is a duality, he's saying, this is one duality that will get you out of all dualities. And if eventually when you can tell the difference between the ego and the spirit, the imposter and the, the voice that's guiding you inward to your true state of mind, once you can tell the difference between these two, there will be no choice at all in the sense that there will be an acceptance. You'll just accept reality exactly as it is. But the mind training is learning to discern between these two. So if we use a practical situation like that, many people present these kind of questions to me all the time, like what would the Course say or how could Jesus help me out in this particular s setting? And what you find is that that one kind of general, I mean, we can't make a general statement or a stereotypical statement for everyone other than peace of mind is the goal. But we can say that, that as you go around, you can say that a lot of people have these issues that come up with people, and, and I would say the first kind of a step would be if this person, if you didn't know this person, if there wasn't some kind of a past association or a contractual agreement or an arrangement that's overlaying this relationship. If you took that off, and this was just somebody that, for example, in your case, that you were like uh, rooming with, maybe like in a, in a motel for a night, uh, and somebody says, said to you, you know, don't brush your teeth, and don't take a shower, and don't do this and this and this in practical terms, how would you treat it? Uh, if they weren't your housemate, if they weren't your child, if they weren't your parent, if they weren't your sibling, you know, these are like overlays of the ego that make, that are designed to make you feel guilty. Uh, like for example, the overlay of like a mother, you know, how good is a good enough mother? You know, that, that'll drive you nuts. Or how good is a good enough father? The ego makes up these concepts, these ego ideals, which are impossible to live up to. I mean, you know, you do your best, but always the ego is saying, is that the best you could do? You could have been a better mother, you could have done a more loving thing, you know, it's always saying you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough. And the ego set up the whole system 